Hi guys, in this video we're going to explore a little bit the aerobatic capabilities of the Mosquito, the new module by Eagle Dynamics. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, this is a um, map that I, I've had it for a long time, I just don't fly it much, so I figured I'd give, you, give it a go. So uh, my favorite part is starting up the Mosquito, you know, the um, sight of those engines pulling up the flames coming out of the exhaust pipes, the sound is just so awesome. It's, it really is something I look forward to every time. Uh, there goes the right engine, flames and all. And <clears throat> I'm gonna skip through, uh, the, we're gonna close the window here, and I'm gonna skip through the engine warm-up and flipping all the switches and stuff, and move straight to the parts uh, where we're taxiing onto the active runway and getting ready to take off. Now, an initial comment I want to make here is that I know that some of the purists are going to say, uh, what the heck are you doing? You know, this is a warbird, you're not supposed to fly aerobatics with it. But I'm sure most of us have been to air shows and seen real warbirds do amazing aerobatics. Uh, and it's a real thrill and fun to watch them do it. And the other thing I want to know is how well will this aircraft perform? What are the limitations? What can I expect in combat? And if I get into any unusual attitudes, can I recover? Um, if I go into a spin, how easy is it to recover? How much altitude do I need to get out of it if I can? So anyway, so the purpose of this is uh, to push the airframe to the limit so that we know what it can and cannot do um, and kind of know how to react in combat. So we just took off from uh, the Nellis Air Force Base and we're flying a runway heading, we're tracking the line here, this beautiful Las Vegas strip down in, uh, at, the, at the bottom of the screen and now we're gonna start our climb to altitude. Uh, we're gonna basically go around the airport so I'm going to speed through the um, kind of boring parts. Just going to circle the airports, falling for altitudes. I don't want to stress, overstress the engines. Uh, so I'm keeping them at about three quarters throttle or so. And uh, I'm going to try to get to about 7,000 feet or so. Uh, and once we are over the runways, uh, heading down the runway, uh, I'm gonna, so now I'm gonna get to normal, the video back to normal speed. So then we're gonna cut the, the throttle and we're gonna begin our routine. So here we go. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a spin. So a little bit of a right engine. So I cut the throttles, but I gave it just a squirt of the right throttle and she goes into a spin. Once she's in the spin, I try to flatten it out. I increase the throttles a little bit. Normally that does it, cross-controlling thing, but she wouldn't flatten out. You know, she's too nose-heavy. So to get out of the spin, all you need to do is nose, uh, push the stick forward, uh, bring the nose down, and then give a little bit of opposite engine throttle. So in this case, I throttled up the left engine just a little bit to get out of the spin. And it takes about one and a half turns, and she recovers quite nicely. So uh, now that we did the spin, we can uh, get down low and begin our routine. We're going to fly our routine, runway heading as best we can, uh, certainly as best as my skills allow me. Uh, <coughs> so we begin with um, half Cuban 8, which is three quarters loop, and then uh, on the downward portion, we fly inverted halfway down to the runway and then we roll to upright and uh, increase the throttles again to pick up speed. Now we're in the middle of the runway and we just kind of do a basic loop, nothing really fancy. Just trying to keep the wings uh, level and looking for that downward. Uh, so, the loop is one of the basic maneuvers that everybody does, but it's hard to do it well. Uh, I started, notice, I started at the middle of the, the runway and I ended up a little bit to the right, so this was far from perfect. There is a bit of a crosswind, uh, but um, 
that I'm not accounting for. But it's also, it's really, really hard uh, to, um, to do something precise with a big war bird like this. So here we go again. Uh, this was the second um, half cubonate that we did. And once again, I didn't have enough speed at the top, so it came off kind of crooked. And uh, now I'm trying to regain back the center of the runway. And uh, we'll just do a couple of rolls. Nothing really fancy, just a few basic things, loops and rolls and cap to the nets. So now we're gonna straighten, we're gonna go straight up and we're gonna try a hammerhead, which is uh, basically we're going straight up and then cutting the throttles and taking the rudder over with just a little bit of throttle blip just to um, get the air moving over the rudder. And then she's supposed to come down um, and Unfortunately, there is some kind of a roll movement, so this was very far from the perfect hammerhead. She kind of rolled and quite, you know, it's work in progress. Uh, so now uh, we're going to do a four point roll. Once again, um, I started down the middle of the runway and I ended up a little bit to the left. Um, part of it is my skill, part of it is a bit of the crosswind, part of it is uh, the really sensitive rudder, which I'm trying to use judiciously, but uh, it gets away from me. So now I'm going to give my engines a little bit of a break. So uh, they do overheat, so you cannot force around with a vertical too much. We have to every now and then. Um, most of the, the routine is wrong with the engines at three quarter throttle at best. Only very few maneuvers require full throttle. So now we're going to do seven point roll, which is 45 degree turns, uh, 45 degree rolls. And we're back to upright. And just a plain old roll which came off more like a barrel roll um, but I didn't really have enough speed for an actual for an actual roll I had to use the rudder a little bit and it didn't look pretty and again I'm doing a flat turn in order to give my engines a break and back into the routine uh, I should have probably uh, made extended that circle a little bit more, but that's fine because this gives me a chance to point the nose up a little and give uh, give it a try uh, for a knife edge. So as you can see, a knife edge is not exactly uh, possible in the mosquito. She holds it for a couple of seconds. Her knife actually left to the right, but. Um, the problem is she's nose heavy, she's just very nose heavy and you can start with the no nose pointed up but if the wing is pointing straight down uh, very quickly that nose is going to come down too so you have to recover. But if you do not uh, want to have, if you don't have the wing all the way straight 90 degrees down, if you kind of keep it like at 50 or 60 degrees, then she will sustain this semi knife edge flight for quite a long time. So I'll demo that a little bit later. So here we're just going to do a sequence of rolls. Trying to keep it as accurate as possible. Now we're going to go to the left, two to the right, two to the left. And as the speed decays, I am using rudder, so um, it's not exactly actual, but it's it's fairly close. So I'm happy with the way she rolls. Um, back into the vertical for another half to an eight. Only this time we're going to add some spice. Instead of just doing a half roll, we're going to do a full roll followed by half roll. So on the way down. There's the full roll 
and then another half roll on top. Um, and you're going to regain the center of the runway. And once again, notice, I mean, this is uh, not exactly knife edge, not a clean knife edge anyway, but you can sustain it for, for quite a few seconds. Uh, as long as you're not a perfectionist and you don't try to, to do like a complete 90 degree way down uh, knife edge. Uh, if you give a, a little bit of a wing up, then, then she'll be happy, she'll, she'll play with you. Looking for that center of the runway again. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try an avalanche, which is a loop with a snap at the top. So I'm going to, as I approach the top of the loop, I'm going to cross control for a couple of seconds. She flips over a couple of times, snaps, and now I should have pulled out, but she rolled on me. So it took me a little while to. to uh, get her under control and complete the second half of the loop. So this wasn't really a clean avalanche, but um, practice makes perfect, so I'll do better next time. Uh, I'm surprised actually she was able to do as much as, as she did. Um, I didn't really try any snap maneuvers, I didn't really try any lob shots or anything like this. And that'll probably overstress the engine. In fact, I'm really curious if. Uh, the real mosquito will be able to withstand the kind of punishment that I'm inflicting on the poor um, mosquito right now. Um, and she's supposed to be a combat aircraft, but um, you probably don't see too many uh, combat pilots performing avalanches and um, inten intentionally spins and stuff like that. So. Um, but, you know, she handles quite well, and here I'm just forcing around, just flying down the runway and taking the rudder over with a little bit of aileron, and basically we're trying to keep the flight path straight while flying a little bit sideways. Um, this would be a useful maneuver if you're trying to go off the aiming of uh, the BF-109 that's sitting behind you, taking shots. So, uh, I'm going to try to do an Inelman, but with all that kicking the rudder around, I lost a, quite a bit of air speed. So, um, I have a hard time coming over the top of the loop and rolling to invert it, uh, rolling to up, into upright at the end of the Inelman uh, just didn't work out too well. So, I'm going to come down, pick up some speed, we're going to try that to the other end of the loop. So in the meantime, we're just going to do a series of playing old rolls, trying to keep it as accurate as possible. Trying to track the center line. And yeah, not too bad. So let's try that thing on one again. We're going to go up, so on the moment is a half loop, followed by a half roll at the top. Uh, you come off converted and then you roll to upright. But this time, instead of rolling upright, I decided to see how long she can sustain inverted flight before the engine's cut out. And it turns out, for a good 5, 6, maybe even 10 seconds, she can fly quite happily before the engine's cut out. Uh, and then, the good news is, I don't know how it is on the real aircraft, but in this module, the engines do cut out, but as soon as you roll to uh, upright, the engines kick back in and you're flying again. So once again here, you know, wind down 45 degrees or so and she flies quite happily. Um, so it's not a perfect um, knife edge flight, but it's, it's this wing down uh, maneuver is a favorite of the airshow performers and the crowds usually love it. So uh, let's call the ATC, time to bring her home. Nice smooth landing. Give those engines a rest. Cut the throttles. 
flaps down. Gear down. And line up with the runway one last time. Slow down. I, in, I usually come in around 130, 120, somewhere there. Um, and then as I cross over the threshold, I bring the speed down to about 110. And I try to keep it there until she touches down. This time I'm a little bit fast, I'm about 130. Well, that's fine, I guess. So now I'm at 120. And looking for that center line. 110. Keep it there, 100. Keep it at 100. A little too slow. And I bounced a little, so this wasn't exactly the world's greatest landing, but we'll take it. And, you know, any landing you can walk away from. Anyway, so as we come to, uh, we slow down to a stop. Beautiful Las Vegas in the distance. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.